So as you can see here, we have um, an outline that you can follow. We're going to start with the introduction. The introduction is basically telling you who you are and why you're going into this field. So let's look at this first. Um, we have the scenario, startling fact, or question. Essentially what this means is that you are creating a hook. Uh, the scenario would be a story that you would tell. So if there was a time that led you to want to get into the career that you're getting into, like for me, for education, I might start out with how in 10th grade I began reading certain books and those books led me to want to become a teacher. A startling fact would be something like how I know somebody's doing a uh, their senior project on um, uh, what are they called? Um, this is the awesome thing about recording because you actually hear my pauses, right? Um, a forensic anthropologist. Uh, there's only a handful of forensic anthropologists in the nation, so therefore talking about how there's only that many, that would be important to talk about. So having a statistic here would be good. A question. Um, what has, just think about the ideas that led you to get into this project. Uh, what are some questions that other people may have once they sit in and are thinking about your project? Explanation of your career choice. This is going to be about your career interest essay. Uh, you're going to explain why you chose to do your senior project on this field. So if you chose this field because your parents have been doing this for decades and generations have been car salesmen, uh, that's great. If um, you have decided to do this because your parents have been car salesmen for generations and you don't want to, that would be another good reason. So, but you have your essay, you're going to want to explain some of the important things that you discussed in that essay. Next up, we have the history, how the career started. Um, first of all, you want to discuss the dates. What are some of the most important dates that you discussed in your historical context essay? When did it start? Why did it start at that date? Uh, what are some advances that have happened and on what dates did they happen? Next up, we have names. Who are some of the most important people within your field? So, um, I know my example in class, I discussed Margaret Sanger for nurses. That would be important for education. I would think about Dewey. I would think about um, uh, the Maria uh, Montessori, which several of you did your hero speech on. Think about that. That would be something good for you to look at. So this is the how the career started. How the career has changed over time. New inventions. Now, inventions don't have to be technology, mind you. Uh, inventions can be something simple like a new way of doing things. Um, just simply uh, having classes in, uh, instead of having school in one building with all of the classes together, uh, creating a building where all the classes could meet, but there were different classrooms for all the different uh, grade levels. That was actually an invention, if you, can, if you understand that. If you don't, you can come and talk to me about it. Technology. I know with nurses, I discussed with several of you uh, how uh, there are iPads now. I went to the doctor. I'm sick right now. So um, last time I went to the doctor, there were not computers in the, in the waiting rooms or in the um, examination rooms. Uh, yesterday, there was a computer there. And that technology is both helping and hindering. You need to understand 
how it's both a good thing and a bad thing. You can discuss that. Other changes. How has the field changed in any other way? Um, and this can be both positive and negative. Discussion of recent changes and current description. Uh, for this, um, this is going to be within the last... I would keep it to about five years because um, if it's happened more than five years ago, it's old news. We don't need to hear about it. So if you think about um, with teaching, uh, recent changes, uh, you can argue with me about this, but I would say that having laptops in the classroom, that is huge for teachers. Um, because in the old school that I taught at, in order for me to actually have the students use computers, I had to book time to go to a computer lab, and I had to make sure that I could make it there that day, that there were no conflicts. Uh, but because every student has a computer, they can use that computer in class, and they can also take that computer home and they can continue to do their work at home, which you need to be doing if you are not, if you are behind. Continuing, we have the educational requirements and prerequisites, which as I called it, it was the educational requirements essay. Recommended high school courses. Now this is something that I required for you to find. So if you're going into the uh, technical field, Obviously, you're going to need a lot of math. You're going to need a lot of science. If you're going into um, uh, to be a nurse, uh, you probably need uh, biology. You might need chemistry. You've done the research. You understand what you need here. Uh, degrees of training required. Now, this could be the bachelor's. Uh, so if you need a BA, which is a Bachelor's of Arts, or a BS, which is a Bachelor's of Science, uh, that could be a start here. If you only need an, an Associate's, that's great. But um, if you need more than just a Bachelor's or an Associate's, this is where you would discuss that. If you need a Master's, or if you need a PhD here, or if there's another degree altogether that you need to get, this is where you would discuss that. Licensure and recertification. Now, I know for education, I'm actually going through uh, my licensing process right now. I am certified, but I'm not fully certified right now. And in order to get fully certified, I have to have teachers come into my classroom. Sorry about that. Uh, I have to have uh, teachers come into my classroom and observe. I have to do a lot of extra paperwork, and that's something that you would need to discuss here. Uh, for, uh, for chefs, what are some of the things that you need to have? Like, is there any... You, you've done the research. Hopefully you understand here. Um, A-plus certification could go here. Anything that you need that is not a degree or training uh, required. This is the licensure. Like, uh, um, I know I talked about welding. Welding has a lot of things. So, discuss that here. Recertification. How are you going to remain in your career? How are you going to be able to um, show that you are still somebody worth staying in the career that you have chosen to be in? This is recertification. Uh, for teachers, uh, every five years, uh, they have to show that they have done professional development, taking classes, uh, they have gone to conferences, etc. And there's several different things that I have to do to prove that I am a lifelong learner, and that's part of my recertification. So education people, this is pretty big. Other people, it's going to be pretty big too.